Yeah, I will. Um, so there are a couple of ways you can set up classes. You can actually set it up primarily in Canvas. So if you already have a Canvas course, you can just bring over assignments. Or if you have it created fully in MyOpenMath, you can bring the whole thing over. So it's both different ways that you can do it. And I'll show you both. So here's my open math. Uh, it's very easy to get um, access. So we register as an instructor. So if you've never done this before, it's very easy. You just register as an instructor accounts and then you give your affiliation. And so it'll check to make sure you are an instructor where you say you are. So the first time you make an account, it may take a day or so for them to verify, yes, you are an instructor. Uh, and then they'll give you access to a faculty account. So go back. So here's my login. I'm going to log in. <clears throat> And here are all my courses on the side. As you see, I've used this quite a bit. Um, and this is my second account because I used to teach at Las Madonnas. Uh, And then there are also different forums where you can get help for using my open math. And so I was very active in those forums and just looking at how to add new courses and what um, you know help options are available. There's a sport course, a training course. So just to show you a course, just to start, I'm just going to go to my Math 63 currently. What I do in my open math is I create just a big list of assignments. And so all of these I have organized into tabs. They're just assignments. That's it. Homework one, homework two, homework three. What I used to do is when I used to operate my classes fully in my open math, I didn't even use Canvas. Um, what it would look like, let's see, this is from 2022. This was a fully formed, here's a syllabus, here's a calendar. This is what modules used to look like for my class. And so you can create these uh, uh, shells within my open math, they can be fully formed like modules, kind of like Canvas. You have your notes, you know, all the descriptions, things like that, uh, little pointers and videos and section reading links and files, everything like what Canvas would look like. And then you can take an export of this and bring it to Canvas. That's what I initially did when I started using Can uh, my open math within Canvas. I learned that the imports for bringing over this formatting the formatting will not copy over perfectly. You kind of have to, you know, tweak it a little bit in Canvas to make it look like what you want. So since then, I don't do the content, like all of this text-based stuff, you know, other statistics websites. So this is more student information. It's purely text and links. I don't do that in my open math anymore, although you could. Instead, I just create a shell that's nothing but assignments. So this is my current shell this semester. It's just chapter assignments. Homework one, homework two and so on and so forth. Then I also have uh, like an extra credit section. I have a quiz section and midterms and final section. So I created these over the course of a few years, you know, kind of polishing it to what I'd like it to look like. If you're starting from scratch, you have a few options. You can learn how to create that from scratch. It's kind of like Canvas, or <clears throat> you can start with someone else's course. So there's a link down here to add a new course. You can start with a blank one and you're really starting from scratch. There's going to be nothing there. You can copy a template provided by my open math and some instructors uh, contribute theirs to my open math as an official thing that you can just go and copy or you can copy from a colleague's course and so some of our old colleagues are uh, very generous so if i copy a colleague's course so here are my courses that i can copy from or ooh, my group's courses and oh hey look some of us are teaching on my open math and so you can see tejo has some stuff here and cynthia has some stuff charles you have some stuff here too and so we can find different courses I usually go to a template that was created within my open map. So you can find a level. So let's say I'm doing pre-calculus. So it will filter all the pre-calculus level classes. You can even pick a book that they use. These are primarily all the open resource books. So you can just have you know, like a starting point. Um, so actually, if we do statistics, we do have an open resource book that we use here. <clears throat> Our statistics. Uh, oh, I don't see Alaska Indian. That's okay. So we can pick by book if we would like to. And there are descriptions. It says, you know, what modality it's meant for. So this one's a fully online course. This has, it describes the assessments that it has. So this has homework, one per week or chapter. It has videos already there that are attached to the assignments. There's some PowerPoints and worksheets. And so I started with one of these at some point way back when. I don't even remember which one. And then I tweaked it to have it look like what I wanted it to. And then I changed the assignments as I went. You can change questions as you go and make it your own. And so along the way, that looked like this. And so each of these assignments I have curated to match the text that I use. And so if I give you a preview of what those look like, 
Again, I primarily use my open math for the assignments. There are questions. Um, there are videos attached to them. If you want that to happen, you can enter in your, uh, I can just put a put wrong answers. You can submit questions as a student. They can see whether they get it right or wrong. Uh, sample size. Let me actually put the correct answer. 93. And they can see when I get it right. So green means right. And so these self-grading things are very, very amazing. Uh, what I also like about my open math assignments, they randomize. So especially for quizzes and exams, all these numbers are different for every single student. So it makes it more difficult for them to cheat. Um, also, it's great for exam questions because uh, if you want the, every question to be slightly different for different students, you can have it do that. And it will randomize again. If you get the problem too many times wrong in a row, it's like, oh, I'm doing a terrible job. Oh, no, that, that was still wrong. That was still wrong. Ooh, I can't submit anymore. You can have the system feed the student another question and then they can try again. It will change the numbers. So these are all great possibilities that I don't find possible in Canvas. So the Canvas assignments are a little bit inflexible that way. They don't randomize as well unless you have a pool of questions. It, they don't randomize these numbers. Uh, and then you can't feed different students different versions of the questions as easily as this. You can also have question helps here that are available more easily. You can also choose to just turn that off. And so I find the assignments much more flexible within my open math. And I won't get into too much nitty gritty of how to do that here. We would need like, you know, 12 hours for me to teach you how to use my open math fully. But that's my overview for what I like about my, my, my open math and what I primarily use it for, which is homework assignments, quizzes, and exams. I just moved those assignments over to Canvas. <clears throat> uh, questions so far? Before I start getting to how to export and moving things over. Sally, can you talk a little bit about how, uh, you know, like in, uh, in my, in my, in, in my lab, there's a certain way that you can give them extensions and and uh, extra credit, not extra credit necessarily, but extra time and things like that. Yes. So that is another possibility of my open math. So on the side here, you can change uh, assignments individually. So if I go to this homework 1.1, there's a little settings icon. I can change the settings there. That's for one assignment. If you want to do that for mass assignments, there's a mass change thing here. Dates is the most... Uh, flexible one. Here are all my assignments. I can change when they're visible, when the end date is. I can have late passes assigned so that students can have late passes like up to, you know, 24 hours extra, a week extra, whatever you would like. You can set what late passes will do. And for individual students, you can give extensions here as well. So when things are moved over to Canvas, you will have to adjust the Canvas due date. Um, and then if you want to change the late passes, that is my open math only. So Canvas doesn't really have late passes. My open math manages late passes. Extensions, you will have to also change it within uh, Canvas, I believe. Otherwise, the student will get locked out by default by Canvas. So can Canvas takes the ultimate control over the assignment uh, for features that it can control. So you got, may have to be a little bit careful about extensions to make sure that it is accounted for both in Canvas and in my open math. But extensions are possible. You can give individual due dates to students. You know, something happens and they need an extra day for something or they have to change like an exam date. That's definitely possible. Uh, and you can use late passes if you would like. And you can control what those late passes do. So, for example, mine under course settings. You can see what late passes. So my students start with 25 late passes and I basically give them an extra week on assignments and they get to pick when they use these assignment or when these they use late passes. So they can redeem it and then have their assignment due a week later than it originally was. And they can choose when to use those late passes for whatever assignments they might need it on. Uh, yes, yeah, so extension are possible. That's just like my lab, I believe. It's been a while since I've used it and same for a sending age. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. You can set the um, those up however you would like it to look. So here is a homework one, settings. You can show by dates. You can hide it until a certain date. You can keep it open after it's past the due date so they can go back and click on it and keep working on it or review it. 
Uh, right now, I control the dates by in Canvas. I find that cleaner. And so right now, the due date is not set here in my open map. So I would import all this to Canvas. And then I would go to Canvas and change those dates as if it were a regular Canvas assignment. You can say, when is it available? You can say, when it's due, just like the usual assignments that we have in Canvas. Yep. Uh, and then there are other things like how many versions do they get? My get the maximum, they get 99 versions of the problem. They don't get a penalty if they try too many times. Uh, the numbers will change after two attempts, and so it'll feed them a new question. So there's all kinds of little things here. This this is what intimidated me when I first logged in my open map. These are all the settings for a single assignment. I'm like, what on earth? <laughs> They're like, what, what is half of these things? So there's a lot. Uh, but once you read all the different categories, there's only a handful of things that you probably would mess with. That's how many versions they have. That's what I do. Do they get to see their answer is right or wrong and what the correct answer is? You can say yes or no. They can view their work in the gradebook. That is not relevant here because they cannot access my open math. Uh, and then <clears throat> calendar, that, that's not relevant here because they don't have a Canvas calendar. You can make it hard to print. Like There's all these little tiny things that you could do. Now, all of them make sense when you read it. It's just don't be too intimidated. The default settings are usually pretty good. And if you start with default settings in uh, my open math, you can start there, see how it works for you. And then if it doesn't behave how you want it to, chances are there's a setting here that you can change it to act how you want it to. Late passes is a good one. You can say, nope, no late passes on that one. You can say unlimited. You can say you can use a couple late passes, apparently up to eight. Um, and so it, allow it allows them to pass the due date. You can also restrict how late is late? Like one week, two weeks, a month is too late. And so I give my students an extra week past that. They can't use the late pass anymore. You can get, require a password for a late pass. Uh, there were those help videos. You can choose whether or not to display those or not. So there's all kinds of things here that you can mess with in settings. But don't get too intimidated. Really just the basics are what you need. Um, like in the core options, I think this is mainly what you would need to mess with. And then you can deal with any of the options later as you learn as you go. Okay, other questions before we get to an export. <clears throat> so here are all my assignments. I want to move these to Canvas. So here's Canvas, and I was telling Kijil, um before we started, I learned something new while I was figuring out how to show you guys how to do this. If you try to import my open math into your own shell that you created, you can't. So I created this beautiful My Open Math integration demo. So I created this unpublished course and it didn't work because if you go there, My Open Math does not exist in the apps. So that was something that I learned. So if you want to bring My Open Math into Canvas for the first time, you cannot create a shell yourself. You have to use an official class that was created for us uh, by the district. And so I'm lucky because I, we don't generally have our new summer courses here yet, right? And our uh, summer, fall ones aren't there either. So I was like, oh dear, what am I going to do? I can't like take over one of my existing courses. I have one untouched uh, official course that was my enlace section. So my enlace section is usually five seats set aside for enlace students, but I just kind of roll those students into my regular pre-calculus class. So I have this empty little official course that was not being used. So you cannot create a shell yourself to move my open math in. You have to use one of the official courses that were created for us that appear here. So the, you know, one of these, it has like 2024 spring math, the official title and everything. Those were created for us. So I'm using one of those that I didn't have published. I never had to use it. So here it is. And ignore the fact that it's a pre-calculus course. I moved in my uh, statistics uh, class because that's what I had planned to demo with. So here is my course that I created for statistics. There are no assignments here. So I built these modules within Canvas. And so I have all these chapter modules. Here's all my text, you know, how to find stuff. Here are videos and here's links and files. No assignments. All my assignments will come from here. So why don't I create an export package in my open math that I can then bring to my course here in Canvas to integrate it. So from my, my open math course that I've created, I'm going to go to sports. 
So there's a course items here on the side, and then there's an export link on the side that I'm going to use. You can export the entire course. I let you can do that. I like to export individual items because I usually have a few extra files like old exams and like a little scratch pad that I can use. So I don't want to import all of that uh, into Canvas in case I have extra things lying around that students find available. What's this? So I like to do individual items. If you want to be lazy, just export the whole course and that's fine. <clears throat> so I'm going to do individual items. So I'm going to click all of them because I always have these extra little things like here are my old assignments that I used to have. Here's some old exams. I don't want those the notes to myself and then a scratch pad. So I just remove what I don't want to go to Canvas. So a few important things here for my export options. You do have to include an app configuration. Uh, so don't use it if you don't have site-wide credentials. We don't have that. Or if you're doing a second import, this is important. On your first import to Canvas, you have to have an app configuration. So that configures my open math to work with Canvas. And you will tell Canvas what that configuration is. Now, I didn't read the second part the first time I integrated my open math. If you're doing a second import to a course, so I imported half my assignments and then I did the other half later and I put an app config the second time, it blocked my students from seeing the first half of the assignments. That was not a good day. Uh, so I actually had to contact um, the person who wrote my open math and maintains it, David Lippman. He was very nice and helped me out. Only use app config the first time you export. And I actually put this and I have this outline here. So we are importing assignments into Canvas. Don't do the app config once when creating a section. If you do multiple exports, totally fine. If you have extra assignments you want to bring in, totally fine. But don't do the app config the second time around. And that is here, you know, if I was reading properly. Don't use it on a second import. <clears throat> you can use the gradebook setup and categories. Uh, you can use due dates for assessments. So I'm just going to uncheck those because I want to handle it within Canvas. And you do want to have Canvas set my open math due dates. So that way you can just do it in Canvas. And then you only go to my open math for those late passes. If you want the assignments to open in a new window or tab within Canvas, I guess you can do that. I just have it open in the same window in Canvas, so they don't have tabs popping up all over the place. So these are the settings I use. App config the first time you export. Second time, you don't include this. You would just uncheck this if you come back and you know export some additional uh, assignments. And then have my open math set the due dates, and that's fine. I guess I could do the categories. Uh, I think my gradebook is set up for this one. So there's some information here, which is the key and the secret. So our school does not have a school-wide LTI key. So we're going to have to tell this information to Canvas. So I'm going to copy this and just put this on the side somewhere. Uh, so I just have like a little notepad open. So I copied this over here because I'm going to use this within Canvas. So now I'm going to download this export cartridge. Download. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see where I want to put this. My open math exports. Here we go. And I already did this before. We can just do it again. So here's this. This is my demo. <clears throat> I can save. OK, so I've downloaded my export cartridge. Now I will go to Canvas. And here is my official course that has no assignments yet. So all it has is just my modules with all the text and links and files. I'm going to go to settings. And I'm going to import course contents. So I'm going to bring in content using import. And then I'm going to Canvas course export package. So I'm going to select this is the content that I want to bring in. I just created a Canvas course export package. That's what was created in my open math export cartridge. So then we can find that file, which was this guy. So I selected my export file. You can see I did this multiple times for some of my courses. You can do all the content. You can do select uh, specific content. So I like to see what's being imported in case I missed something or there's extra stuff. So if you want to be lazy, just do all the content, or you can just select specific content. You can adjust the due dates if you want. So if you already have due dates in My Open Math and you just want to shift it to a new semester, you can do that. Uh, I just set those up uh, in 
canvas directly, so I don't do that, but you could do a shift. And then import. So it's going to run for a little while. Hopefully this won't take too long. Yeah, so here we go, select content. So this is my cartridge th that I brought over. It's waiting for selection. So it wants me to tell Canvas what to bring in. So here are all the modules that I want. And those modules are basically my assignments. So I can bring in these, all of my assignments. And I do want my open math to be brought in. So I want all of that. I can do course I have to do. Okay. Select content. So I selected everything I want to bring in. And it's going to run for a little bit. And the next thing we're going to do after this is done running, we're going to take this site key and secret and then make sure that our My Open Math app is set up so that it will work properly within Canvas. Yeah, this is running, 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 running. You know, if I were smart, I would have just done like three assignments, so it wouldn't take us. Well, while it does that, we can go to settings. So this is now under Canvas mm -hmm. settings. We want to go to apps. So up here, up top is called apps. So this is the My Open Math app. So if you don't see it, if you see the install ones, if it's not here, you may have to click like an uninstalled or all. This is the My Open Math that we want to add. So we click that and it says add app. We want to do that. Here's the consumer key and the shared secrets. So here is that key that My Open Math told me. And here is that secret that My Open Math told me. And if you lose that, so that was on the export page. If you navigate away from this, this was our original export page. So let's say you navigated away from this, like, oh no, what was the secret? What was the key? You can find it again if you go to Core Settings in My Open Math. If you go to LMS Integration, that same information is here. So you can recopy it again if you lost that page where it was originally displayed. Okay, so here we are back to Canvas. I've given the consumer key, shared secret, all the app. Uh -huh. So now if we go to integrations, oh, oh, just kidding. Uh, is it this one? Oh, view app configurations. This is now listed as something that is within this course. So this is an app that is definitely available. And if we go back to our imports, let's see if this is done running. Ah, so it has one issue. Yeah, the security parameters for the external flow need to be set in core settings. We just did that. So I kind of did it in the middle of the import, but that is set. We should be good to go. I can now go to assignments to see what I have created. <clears throat> so all of these were put into categories as I had specified within my open math. So all the homeworks are grouped together in a nice homework block and you can change this percentage so this is just what I had set in my open math, but you can change that as you do, usually would within Canvas. And quizzes, same thing. So I have all of those there. Uh, these are called default for some reason, but I can change this. And it's, let's call this yes. Sure. And some of them are miscategorized, like review and practice for some reason. You can just move those. But now these are basically like Canvas assignments. So you can move them around how you usually would. So I can move them over here into different blocks. I can move them wherever I need them to go. I can go to my modules and move them around as well. So let's go to a homework though and see what this looks like. So if I go to a homework, let's click on an assignment. Oh no, this is saying fake, oh no. Um, maybe I did do this too soon with my apps. Got an app. Where's my key? Where's this one? Well, you may have to go to 
Y me resiste. Silence. Oh no. Well, maybe I imported. So I did this multiple times yesterday, and that's probably why, because I did too many imports. Um, so I'm going to go now to my actual class. So uh, my problem here was I imported several times. And when I was saying that you only do the app configuration once, uh, when I cleared the course, I did not clear the app configuration. And so when we have this caution, only do the app configuration once when creating exports for a section, that's the, that's the key right there, is I did it twice because I demoed it once and then I did it once myself yesterday. So that app configuration is very important. Um, what usually would happen is with my assignments. So this is just the identical course that I've just set up for my own students. If you go to any one of these assignments and click on one, here's a quiz. The My Open Math app will just open within Canvas. And so I have the teacher preview. So students would just have their own student preview here, um, whereas they want to start an assignment. So I can reset it here. Here's the teacher preview. The assignment just appears within Canvas. And so they don't have to go to My Open Math at all. Students don't have to come to the My Open Math site at all. They can just work on their assignments within Canvas, but it just opens that My Open Math page within Canvas so it's all integrated together. And all of these grades will be tracked here in Canvas. Go to grades. These are my current students. And I shrink their names over here just so they remain anonymous. Here are all their scores. So I didn't have to bring over scores or anything like that. My Open Math keeps track of all their scores throughout the semester here. And so you can maintain your Canvas gradebook as you normally would. All of these little color tags are the same for late assignments or they use the late pass, something like that. And so all of these are maintained within Canvas. You can check their grades here in My Open Math too. I haven't found a reason to um, because this gradebook is what students see. So I don't wanna mess with anything here in My Open Math because I want to uh, change anything with grades in the site where the students actually see their grades. So in case something goes wrong over here, it's not what students see, this is what students see. All right. So what we just did was importing assignments into a Canvas course. This is the first time you use My Open Math within Canvas. So you do that app config. Oh, I hear something. Is there a question? No, okay. I also have a couple links here that I wanted to share with you. So My Open Math has their own description of how to do this. And those were the instructions that I followed. And then there was an import demo video by David Lippman. He was the one who maintains My Open Math. So that link is also in the chat. Those were the two pieces of uh, information and resources that I used to learn how to do this. And so he has very detailed instructions for how to do that. So this is if you've never imported anything from My Open Math into Canvas. You have to go through that export package and then import it into Canvas, and then everything will be set up. The other thing you will want to do is once you've successfully done this, chances are you just want to copy that same course and do it again. You can do that. And this time it's much easier to do that if you already have My Open Math integration. So what I'm going to do Hey, Shana, before you do that, one quick question. Yeah. Um, you said you create the content in Canvas, right? Because you, you no longer create the content on the My Open Math site. Yes, because when you import things like text and modules, the formatting changes a little bit. And so you could have made it look beautiful. All the tabs look exactly how you want. And they're indented however you want. And then Canvas does whatever indentation it feels like. <laughs> yeah, you lose all the indentation. So the content will be fine, but your formatting will not look like how you set up in My Open Math. So I would advise not creating the modules in My Open Math. I would just do the assignments but then, and then create the modules directly in Canvas because you know what they're going to look like. But my question is, when you import okay. all the assignments, do they automatically go into the modules or are you going to have to? They do not. So you will have to move those. Right. So that, oh yeah, that is an excellent point. Let me go to my modules. This is back to the course where 
I have only imported the assignments. So here's a chapter one module. This is an actual module that students will go through objectives, notes, screenshots, things like that. There are no assignments here. There's just videos and textbook reading and all these different tabs where students would go. So to put the assignments where you want students to find them, I'm gonna add an assignment. And what, what is this chapter one? So I'm gonna add all the chapter one assignments. This one, this one, this one. I add them all at once and then I drag them around. For some reason, they are not always in order. Chapter one quiz. These again, okay. You can choose whether to indent or not, just like the usual Canvas settings. I'm gonna add those. They will be added right down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna drag 1.1 up to where I want it to be at the end of my 1.1 section. So I have the textbook reading for the students. They have videos they can watch, and then I have them work on an assignment. So then the next section, here's a reading, videos, and here's their assignment. Textbook, reading, videos, assignment. Then 1.4, here's the reading, here's their videos, and then I want them to work on the assignment. And then at the end, I have a quiz. And so now as they work through the module, they can access these homework. So they will appear within order of how I wanted to within the module. So since my open math doesn't have all that text and video content, it doesn't have my course organization, my open math only has the assignment. So when I move them over, I have to put them where I want them to appear. But at that point, it's like any Canvas assignment. You can drag it just like a regular Canvas assignment. You can move it. You can set the due dates. And so for this assignment, if I want to edit this, oh, let's go here. If I want to edit the due dates, I can. I have the settings. All the regular Canvas settings are now here. So you can have unlimited attempts assigned to whoever. If you need to add an extension, you can add a student here and then create different uh, settings for them. You can set a due date. You can set when it is visible. So I know, Rob, you were asking if you can set visibility, you can. So let's say I don't want them to see it until like next week. So I don't want them to see it till the 29th and then it closes on the next day or whatever you want it to be. So you can set those up for visibility. You can set an individual due date. You can set up different due dates for other students as well. And so once those assignments are in Canvas, all those Canvas options are available, just as if it were a Canvas created uh, option. Thanks, Shanna. I, I did want you to talk about that. Remember our best practice at EVC is mm -hmm. not to give access to the assignment page to students, right? You want to put all yes, your- Yes, that, that is actually an important <laughs> part of what I want to talk about later with lockdown. It is extremely important not to make that visible for that reason. So in my regular course, so this is the one that I currently use. Like right now, this is just my demo course, but I'm gonna go to my real course that my stu that is student facing. Notice that assignments are hidden. And so generally, if you just do like quizzes and homeworks, it's not uh, that big a deal uh, with my open math, but it is best practices at the college that we hide it. I do recommend you do that. And if you want to give exams within lockdown browser that are proctored, it is extremely important that those are hidden. And I'll talk about that after we talk about export stuff. And so the same thing will be true when you use my open math, we can leave those hidden. Okay, so where's my outline? So we have imported assignments into a Canvas course for the first time. So what happens if you wanna do this for a next semester? So I'm gonna go to my demo course and I think my demo will work this time. Ha ha ha. So this is now full of garbage that I've been putting in here for this demonstration. So I'm going to reset the course back to a blank slate. There we go. So I just reset this course. This is my empty course that I never used. So there's nothing in it. So now I can go to import course content, which I could have done for the main page. And I can just copy my whole Canvas course. So let's say I'm setting up another statistics course. I can just copy my existing one right now 
and bring it in. So I can include completed courses. And I just want to bring in everything. Or if you want, you can do specific content. I'm just going to bring in everything. Uh, you can adjust the events and due dates. So I can shift those. I'm not going to bother right now, but you can shift them so that it starts on some other date. Or let's say this is for fall. What time, when do we start in fall? August 26th, right? Something like that. Uh, or do you want, we're just not going to date any date. Oh no, this is this is the original January 15th. Okay, so this is the original date. I want to change this to August 26th. So if this were for my fall course, I want my new starting date for the fall semester to be January 26th. And so the ending date uh, is sometime in December, I'm just gonna guess. Yeah, 15th. What was it? I think the so, 15th? December 15th, yeah. Yeah, December 15th. December 15th. That's a Sunday? Anyway, okay. So then it will shift the dates for me. And then generally I have to move things within a day or something, but it will move your whole schedule over, which is kind of nice. Okay. And then we will click import. Now it's going to bring everything from my existing course. So I'm copying from Canvas to Canvas at this point. And I'm copying a Canvas course that already had my open math in it. So once you do your first import from my open math, chances are you won't have to go back here to my open math again. You can just go from Canvas to Canvas because you've already moved my open math over. I'm going to import. I'm just going to do everything. So just give me all my quizzes, my external tools, the announcements, everything. And I can change the dates later like this. Cute. We are waiting game again. Once we do this, uh, we will click on an assignment and my open math will ask you how you want to handle this. So it would be copying the same content that was already copied to Canvas from my open math, but you don't want generations upon generations upon generations of students in your same shell in my open math until the end of time. <laughs> I don't know how many thousands of students that would be, right? So if you notice in my open math, I have a different one per section. So I have it from fall 2022, fall 2022. So I have the spring one. I have the Monday, Wednesday version. I have the Tuesday, Thursday version. They're all different. I don't want every single generation of the student into the same shell because that becomes a nightmare. And then if you change one thing for a later course, it's going to change your course for the earlier students. And if they're going back to reference it, they may notice things are changing and they're wondering why. And so there's an option you can select within Canvas to create a different section within my open map, and it does it automatically. So notice that my course titles match the ones in Canvas. So it will automatically create a separate section for you with the same title as your Canvas course. So that way, this is very clean. This is only my section 216. This is only my section 205. And so you're not filing all the students into the same course. Uh, within uh, my open math. Oh, this is still running. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, let's see. I don't want to touch this till it's done. This is better than uh, my lab. Because for my lab, you that, have to... I've never integrated my lab. So for my lab, you, you can, you do the same thing, but it doesn't uh, create a section automatically. You have to make a copy, so you have to kind of re reconnect. But I it's guess one extra that's what step. I, had to do. I was making a copy within my open math and then re-importing. And then I read oh. I read some of these very helpful support courses. Like, how do you do this? Right. And there are so there's a these are the supports sections and forums mm -hmm. within my open math. There's this how do I? This is gold. Like since I logged in, there's been 3,000 posts, you know, people <laughs> asking questions. And so this is all the different messages. People like, how do you put links? How do you message users? How do you create a new function? How do you replace files? How do you like do LTI integration? So you can search this for any topic that you know someone already had the same question. So you can search these forums within my open math for how to do some of this stuff. That's what I did. So this is completed, finally. Okay. So finish importing. 
I'm going to go to homework. Ah, so this is now working correctly, and it's why my first demo did not work, because I got up to this point. So when you first bring your new content into a Canvas shell, it needs to be linked to My Open Math. So you brought in the app, the app's installed, it's all ready to go, but My Open Math needs to know what to do with it. So first you bring the communication to Canvas, and then Canvas needs communication back from My Open Math of what you would like to do. So this course, my new course, Untouched, students aren't in here, are, is not associated with a course on My Open Math. So it asks, what would you like to do? Would you like to associate the LMS course with the original course that I'm copying? So I'm copying my spring Math 63 course. I don't want it to be the same group of students because it won't be. So you can associate the LMS course with the existing one. You can create a copy with a new ID and it will create yours. Or you can create a copy of a different course, which I don't think I want to do. Uh, so you will just create a copy of the existing course. And then my open math will create this over here for you. So you don't have to create a separate section. Um, and let's see. Well, let's do this. And I don't know how long this will take. <clears throat> oh, well, there it goes. So let me refresh this. Let's see what this is. Aha. So now there is something created here called, this is the shell that I've been using within my open math. So notice I'm in section or math 21, 208. This was just created by my open math. It's at the end of my list. And so if you're looking up top and like, where is it? Where is it? It kind of, it defaults to put new things down here. So my open math just created this to be a copy of the one I used previously, but my roster will now be my new set of students for my new semester. And right now there's nobody in it because I moved all my students out. But your students will automatically be pulled over to this section. And so it makes it very clean. There's only one course in my open math per semester. So you don't have millions of students in the same section within my open math. Then once you click on that one assignment, any assignment will do. It's set up for the rest of the semester. You don't have to ever do that again for that semester. And so these are now linked. Okay, so that was much easier to just copy a Canvas course. So all I had to do was copy a Canvas course to a Canvas course. I told my open math, create a copy, and that was it. Those were the only two steps I needed. Once you have an established Canvas course that you want to reuse. So there is a bit of a learning curve and a bit of upfront work when you first move my open math over to Canvas. But once you do that, it's easy for subsequent semesters. Okay, so I did want to, I'm not going to start yet, but I will talk about grading quirks and then exams. But before I get to that level of detail, are there other questions about imports and integration? Rubrics for... Oh, so once the assignments are brought over in Canvas, the assignments act like uh, Canvas assignments. So you can set up rubrics how you generally would have already within Canvas. So whatever you've done in the past for setting up rubrics for assignments, you can do the same thing with these assignments. So the only key was trying to get them to appear within Canvas. So now that they are already here, the rubrics will act how they usually do within Canvas. And I'm actually not an expert with rubrics. So I'm not going to talk too much in detail about it. Does that answer your question? Not sure. Okay. okay. So lovely. Now I'm going to go to my existing course. So this is student facing. And I'm going to go to grades. So there is an important thing. We've copied stuff over. It's set up. It's facing students. Students can see everything. Students are now working on things. Great. So I'm going to go to grades and I'm going to show you, let's see, where's my math 63. So this is my personal calendar. Today is the 25th, right? So my students had chapter 11 due on Monday. And I, I on purpose, I, I left this alone. I haven't like fully graded this yet because I want to show you what happens. So these, this set of assignments were due for my students on Monday. All of chapter 11. 
So I'm going to go to Canvas, scroll way the heck across. So this is my active course. Here we go. So here's the start of my chapter 11 assignments. Notice, and I sort my students from lowest grade to highest grade, so I can see who I'm worried about, right? These, these students are fine down here. Notice these little dashes. This due date has passed. If I go to grade posting options, I have it set to automatically post grades. I told Canvas, hey, post grades. If there's no submission, it needs to be a zero. Did Canvas do that? No, it did not. Canvas is not putting zeros for the assignments that are missing. And I have not found a fix for that besides going in. So this is what I do after every due date. I go to every assignment and I say set default grade to be zero. Don't overwrite the, the grades. You don't want to overwrite the people who actually did it. Set the default grade. And now the missing scores will be assigned to zeros. So I didn't realize that was happening at first. And so if a student did one homework at 100% and then never touched anything else, their grade for the semester would have been 100%. So these dashes mean the student isn't responsible for this assignment. It's just not included in their grade. And so that will inflate their grades. Their, their grades will not be accurate. So this is one quirk and one annoyance of my open math. Uh, these grades will not automatically become zeros, even if it's set up that way in my open math. I tried that too, because my open math will also put zeros. And my open math will do that successfully, but Canvas will not. So it's, every week I said default grade to zero. It's it's pretty quick. It's not that many. It's um, do that it, the oh yeah, question. It's a it's a quirk of the integration. It does the same yeah. thing for my lab for Cengage. It won't say it will Oh really? All of them. Okay, it. that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so it's not, not just it's for not my good. open math. <laughs> but but if you're used to that, then yeah, this will be the same thing. So here's uh, all my yeah. If you're only using Canvas assignments, then yes. But uh, if for okay. integration, <clears throat> it does that all the time. Oh yeah, I didn't realize that at first, and then my students are doing very well. I'm like, oh, that's great. And then I, I realized what had happened. I'm like, oh, that's not good. So I had to fix all the grades, and the students had a kind of a rude shock because I had like a month's worth of assignments that basically weren't graded. Right. And so those who just didn't do any work thought they were doing so well. Which, I mean, realistically, <laughs> they shouldn't have believed that, but... No. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, so, wasn't, it wasn't great. I, so now, I usually, I started telling my students that I'm going to go look at all your assignments and I will finalize the grade after the due date has passed. Yes. So, so, so don't, I don't that, believe the grades until I have finalized them. Exactly. That's but a good know, idea. A, a, week, a week after the, uh, the due date, the grades are finalized. I do it within a week, usually. Yeah. Um, so... It was you on the 22nd. I just did it now. And I purposely didn't touch it because I wanted to show you how that what that looks like. Uh, and then generally by the following week, I would have put the default grade so students can see a realistic picture of their grade. I don't want to mislead them thinking, oh, yeah, they're doing fine. But they're missing like two chapters worth of stuff. Yeah, no. uh, their grade isn't as good as they think it is because the default grades were not set. And so chapter a, 12 is not due like, yet. So yes. I would not touch those because I don't want to bring down their grade because that's not fair. They're not responsible for chapter 12 yet. I would Correct. wait after the due date and right. then put default grades. Yeah. And and just just a <laughs> side note, it's a it's a I consider it a nice passive aggressive way of letting your students know, hey, you didn't do that assignment. Look, you got a zero on it. Because yeah, it sends them a message, right? <laughs> yeah, a little. I mean, in addition to you know a humanizing message that you send them to ask what. Yeah, of course. Assignment. And you can do the same thing of uh, message students who. <laughs> Oh yeah, haven't submitted anything yet, or mm -hmm. they scored no more than you know however whatever percentage you want. So you can still match the students the same way. So again, once the the assignments are in Canvas, uh, they function just like other Canvas assignments would. So all the same features that Canvas has for assignments, they're still there. So those are is the core thing that you need to remember is to set those default grades. Um, and let me close this. I know we're supposed to end at six, right, Tejal? Is that still true? I don't know how long we, oh, you're on mute, I think. But I think we would want to hear about the lockdown browser because all the math courses have yeah, so exams. Yeah, so I was going <laughs> to open the floor for any important questions that people might have. I'm willing to stick around a little longer so I can talk about uh, this. And I can send out this file to everyone too, but if you notice, I have quite a long description here for be careful, be careful, caution for using lockdown browser with uh, my open math. So I'm willing to talk about it. I have the time. I understand this is only an hour though. So um, 
I can send this description out to everyone. You can ask me about it at a different time. Uh, but are there major questions about my open math integration before I dive into this very specific topic? And we're recording now too, right, Tejal? So if people need to go, they can watch this later. Yes, yes, we're recording. Yeah. Definitely recording. <laughs> then I can hang back too. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's good. my open math and lockdown browser. So I don't like Canvas quizzes. So the only way that we can use lockdown browser is to use Canvas quizzes, which is already annoying because I have quizzes and I have exams in my grading, but why did they call the quizzes quizzes? Anyway, so here's quizzes. So right now I have uh, midterm two and a final exam. And I have a, I always set up a practice assignment so students can, you know, practice using lockdown before exam day and don't run into disasters that day. Uh, notice my midterm one is missing. Talk about that. So I find it restrictive that you have to use Canvas quizzes to use lockdown. It's, I don't know who designed it, but it's not meant for math people and creating math questions. So I do not use in, like using Canvas quizzes within lockdown. It's very restrictive to me. So I already have these assignments in my open math. They randomize, you know, they can pull the questions They're already written beautifully. All the graphs appear correctly. So I wanted to use my open math assignments within lockdown. And guess how I figured out how to do this? I went to the support course and asked, how do I? And someone had a suggestion for how to do that. So it is restrictive in Canvas. The workaround is basically to create kind of a dummy quiz assignment. And you don't even have, you, you just create one question. It's not even a question. It's just a little paragraph that says, hey, click here to start your assignment. And there will be a link to the My Open Math assignment within the Canvas quiz. So to be able to access the link to the assignment, they have to go through lockdown browser. They have to be able to view the quiz. So it has to be open within Canvas. So the visibility is there. And that is the only place that they can find a link to this assignment. So you have to be very careful about making that assignment appearing anywhere else. Otherwise, if it appears in the calendar, they can just click it. If it appears in the course room, they can just click it. If, they, if it appears in a module, they can just click it. So you have to hide the My Open Math assignment everywhere. It can't be anywhere. You don't even put due dates on it. Otherwise, it'll appear in the calendar. And you basically leave it blank. It just kind of sits there hiding in a corner. And the only thing that's visible to students will be the quiz that has a link to that assignment. So I'll, I'll go through all the nitty gritty of this, but I will also show you what that looks like. <clears throat> so if I go to... Uh, let me go to what the student sees. So I have a midterm module. I'll go there. Okay, I got it down here somewhere. Uh, midterm one. Here's midterm two. Okay, they've already taken midterm one, and I've already made changes there, and I'll show you what those look like. Let's go to midterm two. They haven't taken this yet. So right now, notice this is a Canvas quiz. That's a rocket ship, right? So this is the Canvas version of the assignment. And I also have them uh, submit their written work. So that's just a file submit. That's typical. But the way it works for lockdown is you have to put only the rocket ship where students can find it. So if I click on that, and notice it's worth zero points, which some students will notice and it'll bother them. Let me preview this assignment. So it's available May 13th. It's available to them all day. They get to pick when they start it. It has a two hour timer. You can set it up, you know, however you'd like. So this is the whole Canvas quiz. This is created within the quizzes section of Canvas. It's just a single paragraph that says, hey, don't submit this. Click here, click here, click right here to start your exam. And so if you click that, it will take them to this My Open Math assignment. And it's all within lockdown because they can't get here. They cannot access the My Open Math assignment, unless they go through quizzes. This is the only link I provide to them. This is the only path to get to this assignment because I've been very careful to hide every other trail that will get here. I know it's a little paranoid, but we have to keep this fair. If everyone's using lockdown, everyone has to use lockdown. And if a couple students manage to take it without lockdown, that's not fair, right? Um, so the ways to make this possible and 
fair to all students, the assignments tab has to be hidden. We already talked about that. Otherwise, students will just go to the assignments, but we'll find the unlocked down version and just take that instead. The Canvas quiz should be included in modules. The Canvas quiz, the rocket ship quiz should be there. The My Open Math Assignment should not be there. It can't be there. Otherwise, they'll just click that one and then take it. Otherwise, they can access the exam outside of lockdown. You can't put a due date on the My Open Math Assignment. I learned that the hard way. And luckily, I, I fixed it within like 10 minutes um, of midnight. Because if you put a due date on the My Open Math Assignment, the Canvas quiz already has a due date. If you add a due date to the My Open Math Assignment, both of them will appear in the calendar. And so I had a student at like 12, 10 in the morning say, hey, there's two in the calendar. Which one do I take? I'm like, um, thank you. Uh, sorry, I fixed the problem. This should only be one now. So I had to remove the due dates because students were seeing both versions in, in Canvas, which is not great. If they happen to click on the non-lockdown one, they didn't have to use lockdown. So no due dates on the My Open Math assignment. The rocket ship one should have a due date and availability chosen. The other assignment should not be there. Also, just to be safe, I don't even publish it until the students are supposed to start. Like five minutes before they're, they're going to start, that's when I publish it. No due dates, no nothing, so it doesn't pop up as a new thing. Otherwise, they will see two exams, and they'll be able to click on it from the calendar. <clears throat> so that's for setting it up. Just make sure there's no trail to that My Open Math assignment, the unsecured one. Make sure there's no link to it anywhere. The only due dates assigned are to the Canvas rocket ship version. Then after the exam is over, they shouldn't be able to access the My Open Math assignment. So this is what I do after that midterm is over. Do, 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 do. Where is my, okay. So this is a midterm they have not taken. Rocket ship, written work. So this is the Canvas quiz with lockdown, lockdown browser, written work. Let me go to their midterm. Notice for the midterm, rocket ship is gone. I deleted the whole thing. So the Canvas quiz with lockdown, it's gone now. They are done taking this midterm. They, they don't need lockdown anymore. They're done. This is when I move in the unsecured version, and I call it midterm one grade. So this is the assignment that they actually took, but they can't open it anymore. The due date's passed and it's been locked out. So I put it into the module instead of the rocket ship, because now in their grade book, they don't see zero out of zero for the rocket ship one, because that's very confusing and concerning to them. I understand. So they can see two grades for their midterm until you delete it. And so for the day they take their midterm, it's a little bit confusing to a few students. They don't notice. Um, so after the midterm is done, after the exam is done or quiz, whatever it is, I delete the lockdown version because they don't need it anymore. They're done accessing it. And then I only put the midterm one and I call it grade just to make it really clear. And then, of course, the written work one is still there as well. So... Um, Shana, do you delete the other quiz, the rocket ship quiz, or you leave I, it, you just unpublish it? I delete it, it's gone. Because so you can't unpublish it because students have taken it. They can so delete I just delete the whole thing. That's what, okay. Yeah. So then what if somebody, if you need to give an extension to a student or make up? Sometimes I have to keep it around for an extra few days. Mm -hmm. And I will point out, so a couple of students will email and say, hey, why are there two scores? I see zero out of zero, and then I see, you know, 12 out of 14. I'm like, don't worry. The zero out of zero is just there so that we can run lockdown. Don't worry about it. I can see your score. Yes. See you got a 90%. I can see it. Don't worry. <laughs> Most students won't even notice. Uh, but sometimes you have to point out that they have to scroll all the way to the bottom of their grades so they can see it because I didn't put a due date on it. So it's at the very mm -hmm. bottom. So it'll be at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. So they will see the zero out of zero first. And then they freak out and they'll, they'll contact you. But tell them to scroll all the way down to see the real grade. And mm -hmm. then I can tell them. I can see it. Don't worry. It's there. <laughs> And then within a few days, I delete it, uh, the, the zero out of zero, and then it, it's all fine. Mm -hmm. uh, da, da, da. So, I'm going to find out why Open Math doesn't let you do lockdown browser. Since I don't know. I don't know why we can't <laughs> do a different assignment besides quizzes. Uh, so all of what I described is basically here. So after the exam is over, delete the Canvas quiz. And then you can finally put a due date on the My Open Math so they can see it's past due. Otherwise, they're going to wonder, why are there two scores there? Why do I have zero out of zero? And then once you finally put a due date after the fact, they can see that it's over. They can see it you know, if they missed it. And then you can change it so that students can have extensions. You can still do that.
So while they're taking the exam, so I keep my exam open all day. They can pick whether they take it at 2 p.m. or 2 a.m., whatever. It's open from midnight to midnight. That day, there's no helping the confusion with the double entry. It's just going to be there. Um, and so you may have to field a few questions and they're asking, why do I have a zero out of zero? Just tell them, scroll down, you can see it. The score is there. <clears throat> but the grading will always be correct because the zero out of zero, I don't even include it in their grade. It does nothing to their grade. So only that my open math assignment. So if I go to assignments, which is hidden from students, they can't see this. So here are midterm exams. Uh, the midterm two rocket ship is there. It doesn't matter. It's worth zero points. So when they take it and they have that zero out of zero, it's not affecting the grade. It does nothing. But make sure that the midterm two grade, notice I haven't even published this yet. This is where the actual assignment lives. I haven't published it and I won't until they need it, until May 13th. But I put this assignment within that block of their grade book so that it grades correctly immediately. And so they don't see, uh, they don't have a delay for how it changes their grade in the grade book. They can see immediately how that affected their grade. They just may be concerned because they see a zero out of zero, but you can reassure them it's okay. The zero out of zero is not hurting your grade. It was just a necessary thing so that we can use my open math for free and lock out. <clears throat> so that is my worker act. <laughs> and it, it scared me a lot when I first did this, especially when I realized things were not working how I needed to. And everything that I learned, I put in this description, no due dates, where to hide it, where to make sure it's not visible. And I can send this out to people. So just be very careful if you plan to use my open math within lockdown. Um, and all these things are, are fixable. It's not like a huge deal, but um, it is concerning when students start taking it without lockdown. And then, you know, the grading is not working how you think it will. And then students see two exams and they're, yeah, they're confused. So as long as you take care of each one of these concerns, it should go fine. But once I started figuring, I figured out this whole list of things, my checklist, I don't have uh, problems with it anymore with students. And I always do a practice assignment for them too. So they make sure like it's, it's it's all working and it's due within like the first couple of weeks. Make, make sure that works. <laughs> so on exam day, you don't freak out and no, no surprises. So that that is my my most advanced feature. If this is your first time with my open math, you may not want to do that. But if you want help with it, you have questions about it, um, I can help you out. We can do a separate Zoom too if you want to uh, check your settings within Canvas. I'm more than happy to take a look um, and just make sure that. Things are set up how they need to be for lockdown. Any questions? This is how I use my open math in Canvas so far. I don't know if anybody had the question, but just, just to clarify, uh, when you publish the my open math quiz midterm, it will be on the calendar, right? For the 24 hours. It's going to show up on the calendar. No. So here, I'm going to publish it now. So here's my midterm too. They shouldn't need it till May 13th, but let me publish it. Of course. Let me publish it. So notice this is called midterm two grade, right? This is not secure, but there's no link to this anywhere. There's only a link to rocket ship. So I'm going to, go to calendar. calendar. I'm going to go to calendar. Let's see what's there. <clears throat> so let's go to May 13th, which is when this is due. So notice quiz. And, oh, wait, no, I'm in the wrong. Here it is. <laughs> Midterm two written work, that's fine. They can see that. Midterm two rocket ship. The My Open Math one is not there on the calendar because I did not put a due date on it. I see. Yeah, okay. so that's why you can't put a due date on it. Otherwise, yeah, you'll see okay. it here cool. and I'll click it, which was my first mistake when I did this because I thought, yeah, I should put a due date because it'll lock them out, but it also puts it on the calendar. Ah, okay. So okay. you have to kind of keep that's on top cool. of the exam <laughs> timing. So once that midterm is over, uh, then you add the due date because then students can't take it like the next day or the next day or next day, unless you want them to, then you can set that up. Um, but this is not the obvious part is the Canvas version has to have due dates and availability. Yeah. The My Open Math. Don't have it. Okay, label. cool. No labels. It's <laughs> really cool. Uh, my, for my, for my. Helpful and make it available. You don't want Canvas to do anything with it. So don't give it any dates. Okay. I'm going to yeah, I'm going to check with my lab because I think my lab doesn't work that way. That's why I remember that it shows up in the calendar. Mm, okay. So I started using my lab's uh, lockdown browser instead of Respondus. I see. 
then you they, that oh yeah be... what there is a version of that right my open map is nothing doesn't have exactly <laughs> yeah, we don't have that's a problem there. Oh yeah, so um, I guess I'll send this file to you, Tejo. Yes, my my vague outline, and then you can send it out to everybody. Um, I will. I'll put it on the IOTL Canvas course along with the recording, so it's all together. Sounds great. Yeah. Any other any other questions? Thank you for sticking around, whoever is still here to listen to yeah. my yeah. my yeah. very clunky workaround. It wasn't even my idea. It's actually brilliant. Um, but I stole this from someone else who posted about it on my open math mm -hmm. and was helpful enough to share that information. Definitely. It became very important during um, uh, COVID. What do we do? You can't yeah, even. That's break pretty cool. Yeah, to do it in the math lab. So someone had this idea, and it was great. Yeah. And it's a good workaround, right? I mean, it it, it takes care of our proctoring it's requirement. Good yes. The first couple of times you use it, I'm like, why am I even doing this? <laughs> But once you have it working, it, it's great. Yeah. I can I can stop share so we can stop staring at my there we go.